Dino here. Another screencast on Gemini CLI. I see a lot of customers that are configuring Gemini CLI to communicate with MCP servers, especially remote ones that are accessible via HTTP using that uh, MCP remote protocol. Sometimes they have difficulty getting Gemini CLI to communicate to their MCP servers. Uh, and this screencast will cover some tips on how to debug or diagnose the connections between Gemini CLI and the remote MCP servers. The trick to this is you want to inject an HTTP proxy server, a machine in the middle, to allow you to get eyes on the communication that gets sent out. A good option here is Burp Suite. Now, Burp Suite is a suite of tools that uh, administrators, security specialists, uh, very popular with security specialists. Um, there is one particular tool in the suite. Uh, you can get the Burp Suite Community Edition. It's free. There is a license that you have to accept. Um, I like to download the jar form of this, and then I can run it on any platform. Um, there is a, uh, it is free. There is a license that you have to accept, uh, but it, it works great. Uh, and I'm going to show you this working on Linux. So basically, this is going to act as a machine in the middle between Gemini CLI and the HTTP endpoints that it connects to. Uh, and that would include MCP servers, but also LLMs, and as we'll see, some other things too. All right. So how do we get this to run? First, I think we need um, a Java version 21 or... Um, I've also used uh, 24, so you can try that. Um, once you get the jar, you can um, just run it right from the command line. It's going to say, hey, this is the version of Java you're running. And since I've run it before, it's asking me, do you want to delete this temporary project? Um, and I'm going to say yes. All right. So use some defaults, set this up. Now, as I said, there's a whole bunch of tools inside Burp Suite that I don't know much about. The one thing I'm really interested in, though, is this proxy. So once Burp Suite starts, navigate to proxy, and then we want to do some setup things. So go over to proxy settings. It should open tools proxy. Uh, if it doesn't, you can navigate to that. Um, first thing I want to change, or at least uh, make sure I'm, I understand, is the port that it's listening on. And I prefer to set my proxy to listen on 3128, I don't know, sort of the convention. Um, so I'm going to configure that to be my port. Second thing, um, we want this proxy. Oh, before before I move on from that, um, we also want to disable for our purposes HTTP2. Um, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, a little bit more later, but what I've seen is that Gemini CLI uh, is expecting the HTTP servers to, to respond with HTTP 1. Um, so we want to turn that off, and that's just in the, the proxy settings. Um, next thing we want to do is uh, export the CA certificate. Um, and this is because we're going to be proxying um, TLS connections and in order to do that we have to persuade the client the, the TLS client HTTP client in this case since Gemini CLI is a node program it's going to be node.js to trust um, the machine in the middle that is burp suite so we need to download that um, certificate from this or export the certificate from this local version of burp and it'll kind of walk you through where you can do that and I don't, I've already done this, so I don't need to do this, but just pick a file and, and you'll have that um, exported certificate. Okay, so we, we turned off, um, let's see, we turned off uh, HTTP2 in the, in the proxy. I think we also want to default, turn off the default for HTTP2, so navigate to network and then HTTP and Unclick that checkbox, default to HTTP2, um, just to be safe. I'm not sure which one of those things is, is um, relevant or operational. One more thing I want to I want to kind of walk you through and make sure we get right is on the proxy, tools proxy, there is this um, uh, 
setting to intercept requests. Uh, and Burp Suite, the proxy, it doesn't just log requests and responses that go through. It also gives you the opportunity to intercept and, and basically debug um, those requests and responses. So you could change them in flight. Um, but what interception means is, as an administrator, you have to approve each request and response before it go, gets sent out or sent back to your client. And I don't really want to do that. Um, that that's a really interesting and powerful tool. But I don't want to do that here. I just want to see what requests are being sent out and what requests are being uh, responses are being sent back in. So for now, I'm just going to turn that off. Now you may want to turn that back on if you're um, doing some kind of harder, uh, dedicated debugging diagnosis of your MCP traffic. Um, but that's uh, I won't be needing that for for our purposes. Okay, so we have a proxy set up. It's listening on 3128 locally. Now. Next thing that we need to do is uh, persuade our uh, Gemini client to use that. Now, how do we do that? In uh, Node.js respects the, um, the environment variables, HTTP underscore proxy and HTTPS underscore proxy. So I want to set those environment variables in my terminal where I'm going to be running Gemini. So that's the first thing I got to do. The second thing I have to do is persuade um, Gemini CLI, the Node.js, to trust the certificate that we just exported. And to do that, we use a different environment variable. It's this one, Node Extra CA Certs. So uh, I want to make sure I, I trust the, the PEM form of that exported certificate. However, there's a slight twist. When we export from Burp Suite, we're getting the dir form. That's not what we want. We want the pem form. So to convert dir form into the pem form, there's one line command that you have to run. So grab that, uh, run that on the exported um, dir format um, certificate from Burp Suite, and um, then you'll get the pem format. And subsequent to that, you can return to your terminal and set that node extra CA certs to the path that contains the pem file. Okay, with me? Um, so three environment variables, and then run Gemini, um, which you should be able to run um, with the, you know, the way that you normally run it, whether it's from uh, NPX or some other mechanism. And what this is gonna do, it's going to start up and uh, communicate with all the different systems that it needs to communicate. I should have pointed out that uh, in my uh, Gemini, I've got um, one uh, MCP server set up. That is the official uh, MCP server for GitHub from Microsoft, which is a remote server. Uh, in order to set that up, you need a client ID and secret, um, which you have to configure. That's a separate kind of setup thing. But assuming you've got that um, and you you want to use the GitHub um, MCP server, um, this is what you'd set up. Now, this can be anything. In your case, it might be a different MCP server. It might be some custom thing that you've built. It doesn't really matter. The whole point is that it should be um, a remote uh, MCP server accessible over HTTPS. Um, and that's what Gemini is going to use. So this is in my Gemini settings.json. So I've set that up. And when I start it, um, Gemini is going to go uh, communicate to that thing. and you know, inquire what tools you have available and so on. And if if I uh, touch Control T inside Gemini CLI, it's going to give me a report of the MCP servers that are ready uh, and all the tools that are accessible. So we know because of this um, output that we're seeing that Gemini CLI has already communicated with that um, with that MCP server remotely. Let's now go back to um, the Burp Suite. And we had set up the proxy settings. If we flip over to uh, HTTP history, then we're going to see the calls that uh, Gemini CLI was sending out. And you'll see one, two, three, four, you know, you'll see them numbered here. Um, so these are, um, so the first thing it's doing is connecting up to um, play.googleapis, probably not interesting. But the next thing is it's connecting to that MCP server. So it's doing a post. And it's saying initialize. You'll recognize this 
as JSON RPC. That is the initialized call. And then here's the response that um, the remote MCP server is sending back. Subsequent to that, the client sends initialized um, and um, gets a, just a 202 accepted back and so on. The next thing is um, I want to look at the prompts. Give me the prompts list. Um, and then there's some other, here's a request for all the tools. And we can see all the tools that get sent back by that MCP server. Okay, so those are just all calls to the um, MCP server. If I had other MCP servers, you'd see those as well. A couple other things I'll show you in here. Um, this is a call to uh, the Code Assist APIs inside Google, um, just to to uh, notify uh, what project we're signing into and uh, to understand what the the uh, entitlements are. And then, you know, subsequent to that, if I flip back over to my Gemini CLI and ask for some information. Um, if I prompt it, for example, you tell me the uh, three most recently updated GIS in my GitHub. Uh, I think that's something that it ought to be able to answer with the GitHub MCP server. So. This is going to result in Gemini CLI communicating to Gemini, saying, hey, this is what the user is asking. What do you think I should do? Um, the Gemini LLM will probably send back, I think that you should invoke that MCP server. So, um, so we're seeing additional calls kind of in support of, uh, of that particular prompt. Now, I want to call your attention here to the, the call indexes. Uh, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We're missing 18. We're missing a couple others. That's because these are filtered. Um, and what I found is, curiously, sometimes Burp Suite classifies MCP responses as CSS. So by default, Burp Suite will not show you C CSS in the, um, in the log here, the call log. Um, so what I want to do is turn that on. And sure enough, here's a request to um, the Gemini endpoint, uh, streaming Gemini content, streaming content, um, and this is you know this is all the content that got sent up. Here's my user prompt: Can you tell me the three most recently updated GIFs in my GitHub? Um, so that was classified as a CSS response by Burp Suite, no, not correct by Burp Suite. So just you know be careful and um, set your your filter. You can do that by right clicking in the filter settings and just. Make sure that box is on, uh, and then you'll see all the you'll see all the, uh, the CSS uh, or sorry the the requests that get classified as CSS. All right, so that was the request that went out, and then the response came back saying, uh, "I want you to invoke that tool," and then Gemini is going to invoke the tool, um, the list gists tool. Um, then Gemini is going to get the response to that, and then send that back up to um, the Gemini server, and um, the Gemini server is going to give back a response saying, okay, this is what you should say to the user. We've got a few more calls to the MCP server. And then the result, you should be able to see in the user interface, here's the, um, here are the three most recently updated gists. So we use the MCP server, and we use the Gemini LLM, and we were able to trace all of that with uh, Burp Suite as the machine in the middle proxy between Gemini CLI and the Gemini server and the, uh, the GitHub MCP server. So uh, that's it. Uh, this is on Linux. This should work the same way on Windows. Um, you would just need to have Java 24 on Windows and uh, the ability to uh, install and run Burp Suite there, um, just set the same environment variables. It would be a little bit different in PowerShell, but basically it would work the same way and you'd see the same sort of results. I hope this has been helpful. Listen, uh, let me know if you got any questions or comments in the comments below. Uh, Till next time, keep it digital.